Welcome Canyon Springs family. We're really glad that you chose to worship the Lord with us this morning as we celebrate Easter. Easter is a great day. And uh, we want you to know that our hope is that you would join with us in worship. We invite you into our family here as we celebrate the risen Lord this morning. We're going to have several different things. Excuse me. We're going to have several different things going on today. We're going to be having some scriptural reading. We're going to have some singing. And we're going to have a sermon. And I want to encourage you just to hold on with us and worship the Lord with us as we prepare our hearts. Let's pray together and ask the Lord to help us as we celebrate his resurrection. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your finished work on the cross. And Lord, I'm asking that you would even prepare our hearts even now for the message, for the hope that we see in the empty tomb. And Lord, I ask, Lord, that as our voices go out, that your name would be lifted up. Today we celebrate you, your finished work, your triumphing over the grave, and we thank you for the life that we have because you live. May this service bless you, encourage us. In your name we pray, amen. Ephesians chapter number one. And you at the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together by, with Christ, by grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 5 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the atonement. To suffer rejection and pay for crimes he had not done. For what earthly reason would the Father let him hang on a tree? I wept with the answer that one earthly reason was 
Scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. I encourage you to sing along as the girls sing, Up from the Grave.
Jesus, my Savior, He tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave He arose with the mighty triumph for His foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. Scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, and that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God! family. Let's grab our Bibles this wonderful resurrection morning to Luke chapter number 24. Find your way there. Luke chapter 24 in your scripture there. I hope and trust that you are at home. Have your Bible prepared and ready to go for today. And uh, we're so honored that you would choose to, if you will, be with us 
today. Um, I'm going to ask <clears throat> that you take a little moment and just relax for a second and ask the Lord to help you. Beautiful music, beautiful words to the songs. And today is a great, great day. Let me just tell you something. Uh, the coronavirus uh, doesn't have any power over the resurrection. The coronavirus doesn't change one bit what the Lord did. Didn't change one bit the truth of the resurrection. It only, if you will, accentuates and makes the noise that goes on around us go away. The coronavirus makes it a little bit more quiet, a little bit more solitude, a little bit more social distancing. We're not necessarily having ourselves be involved with all sorts of uh, extracurricular activities. Our mind has a time to slow down and our thoughts have a time to focus upon the Lord. And I trust that you're doing that even now. As the noise goes away, we might use this time to hear what we need to hear and to understand what we need to understand about the resurrection. And the fact that the resurrection is an amazing blessing, it's an amazing miracle, uh, is to show us that you and I have an opportunity to live the life that the Lord Jesus desired to give us all because that the tomb is empty. And so as we wake up in the morning like I did, as you wake up in the morning, I want to encourage you to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the morning. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you, Jesus, for tomorrow. Thank you for next week and next year. And Lord, as many days, as many days that you choose to give us till you come, Lord, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, and we want to tell you that we love you. As we find our way there to Luke chapter number 24, we have the gospel account of Luke of the resurrection of our Lord. And I want you to notice with me, we're going to read several verses together, and I want you to notice Luke's perspective as he sees the resurrection. Notice with me, uh, chapter number 24, notice verse number 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid, they bowed down their faces to the earth and said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Let's have a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of his word and the message to follow. Let's calm our hearts as we prepare to be challenged. I know it's different. You're at home. We're not used to seeking the Lord so deeply outside of our church pew. But I want to encourage you that God is with you. He's with you now. And he desires to speak with you and to change you. And to conform you, if you will, into his image. And so let's ask the Lord to help us today. Lord Jesus, take this reading of your word and bless it. Bless this message. And Lord, I thank you for the music. 
I thank you for the message of the music, the resurrection. I thank you for the life, the power that's involved. And Lord, I thank you that we can connect together this day, one another, together in our own homes, celebrating your resurrection together. Thank you, Lord. Have, bless this message. In your name we pray. Amen. In Luke chapter number 24, there was a several words that I thought were quite interesting. If you notice in verse 3, it says, Not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they found not the body. You see, Jesus is not dead. He is alive. And as they went that day to that tomb where any other human being would still be, Jesus wasn't. He rose from the dead just as he said he would. Verse 4 gives us an interesting thought, and it came to pass as they were much perplexed. Perplexed, confounded, confused, astonished. I can just imagine the disciples. I can just imagine what's going on. I don't know about you. When things happen, traumatic things happen, when things happen and we don't necessarily understand and our brains can't compute properly what kind of events just happened, we say something like unbelievable. And sometimes we just sit there and stare and say, what just happened? I'm sure there's moments like that in your life. Maybe you've experienced a death in your house. Maybe you've experienced a heartache. Maybe you've experienced a quite the disappointment and you just were perplexed about what is God's plan in all of this? I think the disciples were there. The Bible says they were perplexed. They were so confused. In verse number 6, we see that the angels gave the disciples a little knowledge, a little secret message, if you will. I don't, maybe not secret, but they gave them a wonderful message. Look at verse 6, he is not here, but is risen. Now notice this word here in verse 6, remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. So there is a call here from the angelic to the man that he should remember what the Lord said. You see, sometimes the reason why we are so confused, we're panicked, we are paralyzed, perplexed, astonished, out of our mind, at our wit's end, whatever it might be in your life, that the problem is that we don't remember the words of the Lord. We don't remember what he said. We don't remember what he told us, how he guided us, how he directed us. And, and I think it's interesting to note something. We all fail at times, don't we, to remember the things that are important. Some of you men, gentlemen, husbands, you have uh, forgotten your anniversary. You have forgotten your wife's birthday. Let's pray for that individual. You have forgotten many important things. And so let's not be so hard on these disciples here. And I'm just reminded of the, if the disciples who spent day after day, moments after moments, uh, time after time, years after years with the Lord Jesus, the master teacher, by the way, and yet somehow they forgot what they were taught. It just tells us, my friend, listen, we cannot go on what we used to do or what we used to know. We have to have a daily infusion of the Spirit of God and God's Word in our heart and our life. Because if not, we could easily forget. In verse number 7, we were told about the Word that Jesus said when he was in Galilee, he says, saying the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of the sinful men and be crucified the third day, rise 
again. In verse 8, this is key for the message this morning. Notice, and they remembered his words. They were reminded of the words, and then they remembered the words. This, my friend, is one of the major reasons why you and I have to make it a priority to be under the preaching of God's word. You have to make it a priority. You have to decide that I am weak and lowly and frail and carnal, and guess what? Left to myself, I cannot remember the things that I should remember about the Lord, and I need a daily dose of the Word of God, and I need a opportunities all throughout the week to guess what? To gather together with God's people, to connect together, to fellowship together, to break bread together, to love together, encourage together, and all of these types of things. We have got to make sure that we are reminded in verse 7 of his word, and then we remember those words. I want to encourage you. The disciples, much like us, uh, were busy. Oftentimes, you've seen them assisting the Lord Jesus in his miracles. He would be sending them out and feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000, gathering the children, gathering the lame, gathering the blind. He would be doing all of these things, preparing the Passover this last week, grabbing the colt and bringing it there and putting their coats on him. And so they were involved in ministry. They were involved in what Jesus asked of them to do, but yet they failed to understand God's ultimate plan. I want to show you some interesting thoughts here. Go with me to the book of Mark. You're there in Luke. Let's go to the left. And I want to start in chapter number 8. I want to read several verses of how the Lord uh, shared with his disciples in the book of Mark and how they forgot these words of the Lord Jesus. Mark chapter with me, number 8, please. And follow your way down that chapter to verse number 31. Notice this passage here, verse 31. And he began to teach them. So this is in Mark chapter 8, verse 31. And he began to teach them. What did he begin to teach them? That the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. This is in Mark chapter number 8. Let's go to Mark chapter number 9. Let's look down with me to verse 31. One chapter over, verse 31. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Verse 32, but they understood not the saying and were afraid to ask him. They didn't remember those words. Look with me at Mark chapter number 10 now. Let's look at verse 33. Mark chapter 10, verse 33. Here is Jesus saying to them, Behold... We go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered into the chief priests and unto the scribes, and then they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles, and they shall mock him, and scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. Have you noticed in each one of those accounts, it ends, it begins with suffering, but it ends with, and he shall rise again, amen? Amen. If you're at home, it's okay to say amen in your own home, friend. Now, your wife might look at you like, what's he talking about? You might want to even say hallelujah. Christ is risen again. It's okay. But here at the end of these three passages that we've read, at the end of it, it was, and he shall rise again. I'm reminded oftentimes there are some things that Jesus will share to us and then he puts a little cherry on top. And the cherry for you and I is this, that even though Jesus was going to suffer, to bleed, to die, in the end, he's going to win. In the end, he'll rise again. In the end, God's plan will go forward. And in the end, if we just remember his words, there could be amazing encouragement along with us. Now notice chapter 10 there, verse 45. 
The Bible says here, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered, but to minister, notice what he told his disciples, and to give his life a ransom for many. And of course, you know the passage. They were having a difficult, hard time about this and didn't understand that. Look at chapter 14 of Mark. Mark chapter 14. Notice verse number 8 with me. You know the passage. It's about Jesus is there in Bethany and the woman anoints her with a spike nard, very precious. And the disciples give her a hard time, say, what's the deal with this? We could have sold this. And notice what Jesus said in verse 8. Now, let's remember his words now. Let's remember his words. Look at verse 8. Jesus said about this woman, she had done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. And of course, there's a memorial for this woman because of what she's done, because she listened to the words of Jesus. I want you to look here at Mark chapter 14, look at verse 27. So you see, Jesus was constantly reminding them about the cross, the suffering, the bleeding, the dying, but also about the resurrection. Look at verse 27. It says, And Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that, I am risen. I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And so you see here, the pattern of the words of the Lord Jesus, and we see the importance here of how you and I need to do a better job at remembering the words of the Lord Jesus. I want to submit to you this morning for the next minute or so, or a few minutes if you will, that the empty tomb can help us remember the words of the Lord Jesus. The empty tomb can help us remember that. Here the disciples in Luke uh, chapter 24, they came, they were perplexed, they were astonished. They were out of their mind. They, missed, they were confused. And the Bible says that God sent them a message and says, Hey, do you not remember how he spake to you while he was yet here with you? And the Bible says in verse 8 of Luke 24, So they remembered the words of the Lord Jesus. They remembered the words of the Lord Jesus. An empty tomb can help us remember the words of the Lord Jesus. An empty tomb can help us in our life to remember the words that we should know. I, I want to encourage you, go with me to John chapter number 15. I want to give you a few words of the Lord Jesus that can be really encouraging and helpful today. I want you to go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter number 15. Jesus is spending some quality time with his disciples. He is telling them and giving them information. It begins, I am the vine and my father is the husband. Some teaching. And then I want you to notice as we go down a little bit of the chapter, I want you to notice verse number 8 of chapter 15. And I want to give you a few, a few of Jesus' words that we should remember. I want to give you some facts that the empty tomb can help us remember some really important words of the Lord. And here they are. Number one, Jesus's words of love. We ought to remember how much the Lord Jesus loves us. Look with me, verse eight, if you will. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Notice verse nine, as the father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. I don't know if there's any doubt that Jesus loves you. We know what the Gospel of John chapter 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
We have a God that loves us. And do you know that Jesus loves you? He says, I have loved you. And so he says, continue in my love. You know, one of the reasons why there's so much hate and so much ugliness and so much vileness in our world is because you and I, believer, have forgotten how much Jesus has loved us. And it says, as Jesus has loved us, we ought to go and love others. His words. If we look there at verse number 12, notice this is my commandment that ye love one another. Notice, as I have loved you. Have you forgotten that Jesus loves you? I know that we are in this amazing time, 2020, the pandemic of the coronavirus. People are dying more than needs to die. We are so sad about all of this. And because of that, we have been uh, charged and encouraged to give ourselves uh, a, a chance to not spread this pandemic. And we've been encouraged to do some social distancing and some isolation and making sure that we're not giving the virus to anyone uh, and making sure that we are not receiving the virus and that it would spread. And, and I know that during these times, there's times of loneliness. There's times of, you know what? Maybe you're all alone in your home and you have no one with you. Listen, do you remember the words of the Lord Jesus right here? How that he says, so I have loved thee. In verse 12, he says that ye love one another as I have loved you. Do you know that you're loved? Boy, that ought to be an encouragement to you. And that empty tomb this morning just reminds us that we are loved. We are loved. We see there in this chapter, verse number 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Notice verse 14, ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Verse 15, henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servants knoweth not what the master doeth, but I have called you friends. Have you remembered the words of friendship from the Lord? Have you remembered that he says, I, I don't want to call you servants anymore, but I want to call you friends. And, and when I think about friends, I think about that word friend, uh, fellowship. You see, what the Lord has done is he's loved us in such a way, and he's given us these words to help us throughout this life that he's given us. And we need to be reminded that God desires to have fellowship with us. And so I know that, you know what, it's not exciting anymore. We don't have crowds together. We don't have the energy that we feed off of each other. But I'm here to tell you that we have a God that is not hindered by the social distancing. He is right there with us, and he loves us, and he desires to be our friend and to be a friend, the Bible says, that sticketh closer than a brother. And, and I'm so glad that we have a God that has told us that he wants to be our friend and have fellowship with us. That's a great word that we've been reminded of, of the fellowship. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he was buried in the tomb. That provided a way that you and I could have fellowship with a holy God. You see, we can't come to the Lord Jesus on our own. Our righteousness, the Bible says, is just like filthy rags. The Bible says that there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says that you and I are in need of a Savior. And Jesus, when he rose from the dead, proved to the world and proved to everyone that he is worthy to be called friend. And I want to encourage you, what a great opportunity to be reminded of that Jesus wants to call you friend and have fellowship with you. We see that not only that, but look at verse 16 with me. Jesus said to them, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Huh. I think about the words of, 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 of the choice. The words of choice here. Do you know that the Lord chose you? 
The Bible says that before the foundations of the earth, that the lamb was slain. That meant that he chose you, sinner, dead in your trespasses and in your sins, and he chose you because he loved you, and he chose you. I don't know, there's a lot of weird people in this world, isn't there? There's a lot of oddities and odd personalities, and some have said, I'm one of those. But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter uh, what you might think of me. My hope is not in your thought of me. My hope is in what Jesus thinks of me. And friend, guess what? He chose me. He chose me. Let me ask you. He chose you too. And there's a response. When Jesus chooses us, we have to respond and choose him. He chose you. If you're a believer today, notice what this verse tells us about this choice. Look at verse 16. He says, I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Here's a great opportunity. You know what we forget sometimes? I, I, we strive to teach our girls the value of hard work and chores. But often it seems that they forget. Conveniently forget. And we say, what, what's going on? Why did you forget your chores? I was busy. I forgot. And I think it's just important to recognize here that when God chose us and we chose him and we entered into a fellowship of relationship with the Lord Jesus, that it wasn't just to continue living in the death of the carnal flesh that we are clothed in, but we have been chosen to bear fruit. Wherever you're at, the resurrection tells us that we should be bearing fruit. The resurrection says that we should be striving, if you will, to continue what God has asked us to do. Love one another, preach the gospel, uh, help others, and so on and so forth. We ought to be fruitful. Listen, this is the time. Whatever God has given you, the Bible says to put your hand to do it heartily as unto the Lord. We might have to social distance. We might have to have church in a little different way. But while you're at in home, would you put your heart into it? Would you bring forth some fruit? With whatever way that you can, on the phone, on the media, whatever it might be, would you share the love of the Lord and the power of the resurrection with someone? I'm reminded of those words, the words that he chose me. I'm thankful for that. I was 15 when I chose him. Has there been a time and a place in your life where you chose the Lord Jesus? Well, yes, I have. You might be saying, I have. I was this, that, this age, that age. This is where I was. Wonderful. Let me ask you. Are you like the disciples in Luke 24 that were perplexed with life, confused with life? I submit to you they were because they failed to remember the words of the Lord. Jesus' words of truth were given here in chapter 15. Notice a couple of them, verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. There's some truth. Maybe we forget that. Maybe we live our life so that the world would accept us. Maybe we live our life in such a way that when one person somehow doesn't understand or, or mis, um, uh, misrepresents you or there's a misconception about what you've said to them or so on and so forth, and somehow that ruins your whole day. You fall into a deep ditch of depression, of despair, and perplexity and confusion, by the way, all because you fail to remember the words 
of the Lord. He wants to have fellowship. He chose you. He wants you to bring forth fruit. And guess what? Here's the truth. The truth in verse 18 says this. The world, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. There's the truth. So let's stop looking for the approval of man. Let's keep living in the audience of one, the Lord Jesus. In verse 19, there's more truth. He says, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of this world, therefore the world hateth you. There's the truth. I want to ask yourself this question today. Is the world, by and large, loving you? I want to submit to you. Remember the words of the Lord here. If the world loves you, they're loving you because you're acting like their own. You and I, we are citizens of heaven. And our job, our job is to be an ambassador for him, loyal to our heavenly kingdom. And we know that wonderful song, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. And we ought not to be concerned with what the world believes about us or thinks about us. Now, that doesn't mean that we want to go through life uh, making enemies, my friend. You know what? God's love shed abroad in our hearts, and we're told to live peacefully among all men. We ought to strive to do that. But when the nitty-gritty happens, when it comes, when it boils down, we need to make sure that the world doesn't think we're part of them because of our actions, our words, our fruit. Let's go out there. And be a little different. Notice here, verse 20. Remember the word that I said to you, the servant is not greater than its Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. There's going to be some persecution coming. And if you go to the end of the chapter, we'll begin to close with these thoughts. Look at verse 26. Remember the words of the Lord when he was with you. Verse 26 says, but when the comforter is come. But when the comforter is come. Whom I will send unto you from the Father. Even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. You know what one of the words of Jesus was? Is that I am going to send a comforter. And so when we look at that empty tomb this morning, and we think about the empty tomb, we think about what it really means, there ought to be a lot of comfort. The comfort, of course, is referring to the Holy Spirit. This is the very life of the Lord Jesus pulsating within our own life. And that comforter comes in, and even though the world may not understand us, we have a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And the Spirit of God lives within us, it encourages us, and helps us. And you know what? One of the things that the Spirit of God's job is to do to you and I is to comfort us. Why would we need to be comforted? How is this empty tomb comforting? We, are, we lost our Savior, the disciples and Mary and the ladies. You know what? They were, they were mourning the death of their Master and Savior. They didn't understand that He said, I will rise again. It was perplexing and confusing. But guess what? When we trust in the Lord, we can be comforted by the empty tomb. You know what the empty tomb tells us? That death has been defeated. This is exactly what the empty tomb says to us. Death has been defeated. I'm glad for that. I've experienced in my own life in the last five to seven years, death in my family, my mother, my father, and many others. And I'm glad that that death is not what life is all about. You live, you breathe, you drink, you live, you die. 
I'm glad that death is not the end. I'm glad that the empty tomb tells me that eternal life is real. That because of Jesus, how he conquered death, how he uh, rose from the dead and paid for my sins, that I can have life everlasting. I'm glad that the empty tomb tells me something about carnality and humanity and the earthly things. It means this, friend, that life, life is not all down Death can take us for a loop, and it has. It changes us. When we have a loved one, a close one, it makes us different. But we can be comforted that, wait a minute, life is it all down here. There is an eternity waiting. And while I'm waiting for eternity and waiting to see my Jesus face to face, that I can begin to walk in that abundant life, walk in the light of the resurrection, and I can begin, if you will, to have joy and hope of life everlasting, whereas others have no hope. Most men miserable, by the way. But I can be joyful. It's interesting in the passage there in Luke, they were both afraid and joyful at the same time. Sometimes we get some mixed emotions like that. But you can be comforted that even though when you're afraid, the message of the Lord, if you remember, is peace be unto you. Message of the empty grain uh, tomb for me is very comforting because it helps me remember something that I can trust Jesus' words. He said it many times. We read it in Mark. He said it and it happened. He said it and it happened. He said it and it happened. And I love John 14. He says, if I go to prepare a place for you, he says, I will come again. I'm thankful for that. I'm glad I could trust in his words and I could trust God's word for my life from today on forward. You know what? We live in a world that is changing. Amen? It's changing. There's a lot of perplexity. There's a lot of confusion. But did you know that we have a word that can stand sure? We have a word, Jesus' words, that we can trust and we can live by his words only if we remember them. Let the resurrection this morning, let it remind us of the words of the Lord Jesus. He's loved us. He cares for us. He comforts us. He chose us. And he desires to have a relationship with each one of us. Let me ask you, if you hear, you're watching, and there's never been a time and place where you've chosen Jesus. Let me ask you. Isn't it time? Isn't it time that you lay down your pride, your sin, your will, and just recognize the power of an empty tomb? That Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave so that you can have life and life more abundantly. Let me ask you, would you like to be saved today? We know the Bible says that all have sinned, and this is why we need a Savior. And the Bible tells us how to be saved. It says, for with the mouth confession is made, and with the heart confession is made unto salvation. And so one of the things that we have to do is we have to honestly talk to the Lord. Not in any pompous or prideful way, but in a spirit of humility and the real you. The one that's inside, the heart. The Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you ready to be saved? See, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 12, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Let me ask you, 
Do you have the Son? Have you chosen to enter into that relationship with the Lord? It's easy. Admit that you're a sinner. It's not a problem on my end. I hope it's not for you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe that he died on the cross, he was buried, he rose again? And call upon him. You can do that with me now. Maybe pray something like this in your heart, meaning it to God. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and buried. And on this Easter, I believe you conquered death and you rose again. And dear Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my heart and into my life and save me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you meant that in your heart, I want to welcome you to the fellowship, the friendship of the Lord, the family of God. We would love to hear a record of this, a testimony of this. And we would love to know how we could be a blessing and a help to you. And for those of us that know the Lord Jesus, this is an amazing time. That you and I can begin to understand how important God's word and remembering the word of the Lord. We're going to have a time of invitation. We're going to have a time where, guess what? We're going to ask you to do some business with God. If you're at home, if the Spirit of God spake to your heart, why don't you do business with Him right now? Why don't you just be in agreement with God about that thing in your life that's not supposed to be there? Maybe you have fear, and fear has just filled your heart. Why don't you just give God all of the fear and you take his peace? Whatever the Lord is speaking to you about remembering his love, that you're loved, that you're chosen, that you ought to be fruitful, that you ought to know the truth of this world. It's not your home. Maybe you're putting up residence here on home, but you need to start setting your affections on things above. Maybe that's you. I want to encourage you during this song about our Savior and how he lives. Do business with God. Ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just dismiss us with your blessings tonight and bring us back tonight. And all God's people said, Amen.